Russia. Newly re-elected President Vladimir Putin says Russia has no desire for a new arms race and will do everything it can to resolve differences with other countries. Now, Putin made this known at a meeting with his opponent which, uh, while defending Russia's national interest. Now, he says Russia wants constructive dialogue with its international partners, though they would need to reciprocate and respect the country. The Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe says there was no real choice in Russia's presidential election. It says the poll uh, was marked by pressure on critical voices as restrictions on fundamental freedoms and candidate registration limited the space for political engagement. Mm -hmm. Now this, uh, the OSCE says, resulted in a lack of genuine competition. The verdict after President uh, Vladimir Putin extended his rule for another six years. Mm -hmm. So it, it's almost a no-brainer to ask, you know, um, why did Putin win well, again? Did Putin win? Yeah. All right. We have joining us now uh, Global Affairs Analyst Collins Mweke joining us from Brussels in Belgium. Collins, good morning. It's good to have you join us. A lot of Thanks. analysts... Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, a lot of analysts have said that uh, Vladimir Putin had even won the election before the conduct of the polls. What do you say? Well... The conduct of the polls. What do you say? <laughs> well, from all indications, uh, indeed, uh, that was the case. Uh, that was the case because um, it was obvious that um, quite a lot of scheming were taking place uh, to ensure that uh, the victory of um, Vladimir Putin was, um, you know, a sure banker. Uh, you will recall uh, from activities uh, preceding the elections that, um, you know, the, the most virulent uh, opposition uh, leaders we have, for one reason or the other, excluded uh, from the race. As a matter of fact, um, there are reports that, um, you know, Putin himself had actually set up uh, some phony um, opposition uh, parties uh, that would, uh, and indeed, uh, contested in the, uh, in the election. So, indeed, his grip on the, the Russian power is very, very strong. Yeah, truly very strong. And people are already asking, is Vladimir Putin the most powerful man in the world today and does his victory have a uh, global implications in the u.s there is a russia investigation mm. uh, that w heads are already rolling there in the uk numbers of deaths have occurred of former spies and what have you what will the world look like in the next six years of putin um if, if we take a close look at um the progression of uh, Vladimir Putin's um, tyranny, uh, say, in the last uh, decade, um, there are reasons uh, to continue to be worried that it is not going to get better. Rather, the situation with the rest of the world is going to get uh, worse. Uh, the series of, um, you know, judicial killings, uh, state-sponsored, um, you know, Quasi terrorism, mm. and uh, not to even mention uh, things like um, you know sports, where uh, it has been alleged, and uh, some would say actually uh, proven, that uh, Russia has uh, actually uh, masterminded uh, some unfair practices by uh, you know its uh, athletes. You know these are bits and pieces of um, you know indications that uh, Vladimir Putin is set on a course to teach the West, in his uh, words, some very strong uh, lessons. Don't forget that in his uh, acceptance uh, speech, he made it very clear, on the one hand, that he wants to improve relations uh, with the West, eh, with the rest of the world, but on the other hand, that he needs the West to respect him. And when um, uh, Putin talks about respecting Russia, he's actually talking about himself drawing the plan and the rest of the world falling into the places he wants them to be. So yes, uh, the conflicts uh, are actually set uh, to continue and uh, aggravate. Mm. All right. Well, when it comes to uh, Putin's strategy, it, it seems there is the people back home like him because the issue of Russia first. You know, um, <laughs> if we have to, you know, tilt the coin that way. But doesn't it seem like there's too much emphasis on? the national or foreign policy or the foreign interest of uh, Russia amongst the Committee of Nations than the prosperity and standard of living of Russians domestically? 
Yes, indeed. Uh, you have captured it very well, uh, Mike. There are two issues at play uh, for those of us uh, students of history who want to understand them. Um, uh, the issues at play uh, as far as uh, uh, Putin's uh, hold on power uh, is. One, uh, the issue of national pride. Um, you would know that uh, Russia had uh, been a very, very um, important uh, you know, global player, uh, hugely uh, powerful uh, when it was uh, the Soviet Union. Now, with the collapse of um, you know, the uh, Soviet empire, and uh, the emergence of the Commonwealth of Independent uh, State with Russia as a country taking the lead, uh, um, there were some um, semblance of uh, you know, serious decline uh, in, the, in the power of, uh, of, of Russia and the former Soviet uh, Union. Now, um, Putin came at a time when the Russians felt dejected, when they felt disrespected that he started to take steps to reassure Russians that they are still on top. And by doing that, he took a number of steps in his wars to teach the world some lessons. And now we see that continuing, and that is making the average Russian very, very proud, very, very happy with their uh, leaders. Now, on top of that, you will see that uh, Russia also has uh, quite, um, you know, uh, a good measure of uh, natural resources, which um, they have used to at least make life uh, in Russia not really exceptionally, um, you know, good, like you will find out here in, uh, in Western Europe and the United States. But at least uh, people are not, uh, you know, begging food in the streets and, uh, you know, suffering like we see in some parts of uh, Africa. So all of these two combined, um, you know, has actually uh, dictated the quasi uh, huge support that uh, Vladimir Putin uh, has uh, in Russia, and mm. so um, we he knows exactly where to uh, pinch the people, and he's doing that uh, perfectly well. Yes, and just like you said, that that sense of stability uh, seems to be what is uh, what Putin has going for him, and it has reflected in this fourth term in office that seems to have uh, cemented his uh, power, uh, not just in Russia, but globally. Now, his kind of democracy has been described as a managed democracy because all of this is happening uh, with, you know, a stifling of uh, uh, opposition, stifling of media, no independent media, more or less, top-down uh, management of politics in Russia and all of that. And he still has a stronghold on, uh, on Russia. For Russians themselves, what, what do they have to look forward to with a Putin leadership for the next six years? Well, um, I believe that for the average uh, Russian, if um, Putin continues to do two things, uh, he will continue to be their man. Number one, uh, the sense of national pride. If he continues to play the politics of us as Russia, against the rest of the world, particularly the, um, you know, the power nations, uh, Europe, uh, United States, I think um, the Russian people will continue to, uh, to like that. Like uh, Mike um, rightly pointed out, mm. the sense of national pride is so huge that the Russian interest appears to be, narrow, to be narrowing down day by day in terms of thinking solely of Russia Forgetting that Russia, within the Committee of Nations, is indeed uh, a more palatable foreign policy uh, option than one that only considers the very narrow interest of uh, Russia. But, um, you know, Putin is, go is going to continue to do that. And then, on the other hand, if, on the economic side of things, uh, they do not uh, you know, witness a or experience any major setback economically that creates a huge unemployment and all of that, um, I think uh, he will continue to uh, be a very uh, popular person. But uh, age is not very much on his side. Don't forget that uh, in 2024, mm -hmm. when uh, his current term runs out, he would have been uh, 71. Perhaps that would be mm -hmm. time for him to say, okay, let's pass the, pass the pattern on to uh, uh, a prodigy. Well, he has indicated uh, that uh, this would be his last term, but uh, can you really take uh, yeah. his word? 
Can you take him at his word? Well, that's, 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 the that's one thing. <laughs> but the point there is, if you look at uh, nearby China, mm -hmm. where Xi Jinping has also won his election, and they stay for, for, a long life. For, for life for a long period of time, if life permits and all of that, if there is no disruption in the system, uh, what's going on in China? Is it fueling the direction of things in, in Russia? Russia? Uh, no, I, I have reasons to believe that uh, two separate, um, you know, uh, situations, uh, but indeed uh, quite uh, comparable. Now, could it be that uh, one way or the other, there is an interface between, um, you know, Russia and, uh, and China where the two leaders have uh, connived to, um, you know, uh, hold on uh, to power and uh, extend, you know, their, their uh, term limits uh, for as long as they want. I don't necessarily uh, think so, but you see, uh, there is some sense of this is Russia, this is China, mm -hmm. and this is our brand of democracy, and the rest of the world can go to hell. Mm. Uh, essentially, to put it cruelly, this is, uh, you know, essentially their mindset. Uh, but uh, is there a correlation? Not, uh, not necessarily. But they just feel comfortable, you know, playing their politics in that manner, and they believe that it is in the best interest of their country. Okay. Mm. Collins Mweke, thank you so much for talking to us. Global Affairs Analyst joining us from Brussels in Belgium. Thank you.